Hello and welcome to this demonstration. Today we're going to look at how easy it is to protect my AWS workloads natively through Veeam Backup and Replication. In this scenario, we're starting with a fresh backup infrastructure of Veeam Backup and Replication, and we simply want to go and protect our AWS workloads. Once we have Veeam Backup and Replication deployed, the first thing that we do is we navigate to our backup infrastructure and we go to our managed servers. We simply right click and say add server. This is where we can add all the infrastructure that we want to protect through Veeam Backup and Replication, whether it's VMware vSphere, Hyper-V, Windows Linux agents, or we want to protect our workloads running out in the public cloud in AWS or Microsoft Azure. So we simply pick Veeam Backup for AWS. Now we have two choices here. If we were an existing Veeam Backup for AWS customer, we would be able to connect to an already existing appliance. But in this scenario, we simply want to deploy a new appliance because we've never protected our AWS workloads before. So we say we want to deploy a new appliance. Now we can pick our AWS accounts. So we add in our AWS access keys. Once we paste in our access keys, which have been blurred out for security reasons, we simply say OK. Then we pick where we want to deploy the appliance, which will help us protect those workloads. Very simply, very easily, we just pick a data center. So I'm going to pick North Virginia. We say next. And we give it a name. So we'll call this VBR AWS demo. Now we have the options to either use existing VPC configurations or create new ones for the appliance to use. We can specify an existing one, pick subnets, security groups, whatever we have pre-populated in our VPCs in that data center. But for this instance, we're just going to say create new and Veeam Backup and Replication will go and create everything that we need and configure all the networking we need for this to work. We have the option of picking either dynamic or static IP addresses. For this instance, we're just going to simply pick dynamic. But if we had elastic IPs configured in that data center in that virtual private cloud, we could also pick a static IP. Now we create some administrator credentials for the appliance and we pick a key pair. Now we can create a key pair if we wanted to, or we can use some pre-existing key pairs that have already been created in AWS EC2. Now it's just a case of waiting for the appliance to deploy, which doesn't take very long at all. So now we've configured Veeam Backup and Replication to be able to protect our AWS workloads. So we've shown what the summary of our configuration options are, and we also have the ability to now create a S3 backup repository. So an AWS object storage backup repository directly through this Veeam backup and replication wizard. So we pick the tick box, enable that, and we simply say finish. This will allow us to configure that backup repository. We pick the appliance that we've already configured. We give it a repository name. And then we pick the AWS account that we added in the credentials of earlier. And we, we can pick our AWS regions and we say next. We pick the data center and 
we simply browse for buckets. So we'll pick this pre-existing bucket we've already created. We can enable encryption and add passwords into this for encryption. And we can create a hint as well. So we always know what our password is. Once we have that backup repository registered, we present it with a summary again that gives us all the details around what we've configured and we simply say finish. We can see that we now have an AWS backup appliance deployed, allowing us to go and protect our infrastructure in AWS. So if we go home, we'll see as well that automatically created is a VPC configuration backup job. That will run and detect all our virtual private cloud configuration settings across all our data centers that we have configured in our AWS account. Now we can create our first backup job. So we right click and we go through our menu option to create a backup job. And we can specify whether we want to create an EC2 or an RDS backup job. Now we get presented with this HTML UI that allows us to create our policies and backup jobs. So we'll call this first job policy. We say next. What AWS account do we want to use? So if we have added in multiple AWS accounts, we're able to actually pick those. Specify a region. So we're just going to pick Oregon as a particular region here. Now we can actually pick what we want to protect, whether we want to protect all resources, individual instances, or whether we want to do it via tags if we wanted to automate our backup. So let's just pick a particular instance. And for this particular instance, we're just going to protect our Ubiquiti Networks Unify controller. So we'll protect that and we'll apply. We can exclude volumes if we want to. We can turn on application aware backups if we want to. Do we want to replicate snapshots to different accounts in different regions? And we'll just turn on backups. So when we enable backups, we're actually configuring our snapshots to be offloaded into that object storage S3 repository that we created when we were configuring our AWS appliance. We say apply, then we can pick our schedule. So we'll say we want to do a daily backup of this. How often do we want to take our backup? So we're gonna do it at 12 lunchtime. How many snapshots do we want to keep and how many restore points do we want to keep? We're presented with a very unique feature in protecting your public cloud workload and that's with a cost estimator or a cost calculator. And we can see here that the cost is $4.29 to protect this particular workload based on our snapshots, backup, traffic, and transaction costs. And then we simply say finish. And there we have it. Our first backup job has been created in Veeam Backup and Replication, and we can now protect our workloads natively through Veeam Backup and Replication. We can see that we have our snapshots configured. Thank you for watching this demonstration. For more information, go to veeam.com.